Oh guys, Dan Booknook Noggin, and let's, it's time for another From the Nook. Uh, to be quite honest with you, I'm not feeling really, really super motivated. I kind of feel like I had like a draining week, and I'm just, you know, I feel like I just, I gotta do it, I gotta do it, I gotta talk about this stuff because if I don't talk about it here, more than likely I'm probably not going to make reviews for any of this stuff, so let's just do it. Uh, first, I want to talk about some films that I had seen the prior week. Um, big fan of Clerks by Kevin Smith. And I will admit that I loved all of his earlier films. Like, I loved Chasing Amy. I loved Clerks. I loved, you know, Mall Rats. I loved all his, his prior films, like his earlier films. I really loved them. Really thought they were great. Um, probably the last good one out by him was probably Jay and Silent Bob Strikes Back, and that's not the new version of that. That's the older one. But I know I saw the trailer for Clerks 3, and to be honest with you, in my honest opinion, I think Kevin Smith should have just left off it. It just one Clerks movie. I don't know why he felt the need to do the second one, and I kind of feel like I know the motivation behind the third one. I really think that he wanted to do the third one because he had a heart attack. I get it. He's kind of trying to use his medium as like a public service forum. He's trying to tell people who are around the same age bracket as him that, hey, you know, what happened to him, he had a heart attack. And if you live the same kind of lifestyle he does, you might be susceptible to having a heart attack. I totally get it. Totally get it, Kevin Smith. But I feel like, dude... You're sitting around smoking bongs all day. You've been writing some horrible films. I just... Uh, it was it was bad, and I feel like I was super generous by giving that one a 3 out of 5 star rating. But it was cringeworthy at times. I just do not recommend going and viewing Clerks 3. <laughs> Wanted to get that out of there. Um, I want to talk about another film that I had seen not too long ago. The Conjuring 3, The Devil Made Me Do It. Um, to be honest with you, it has been a super long time since I've seen the first two films in this series. But this one, it has what they call an occultist. And it's kind of funny because it ties in with the Good Omens book that I'm reading by Game and, and Pratchett. But... I really enjoyed this. I gave this a 4 out of 5 star rating on Letterboxd. Um, it's different. I feel like this, like I said, it's been a while since I've seen the other two films. I know I, I probably enjoyed those ones as well, but it's been a while since I've seen them. But I really, really like this. And I know that they're based on, like, true events. And I don't know how much of it is true and how much of it is, like, fabricated for a film. But I, I, I got something out of this. I did enjoy it. It's worth checking out if you guys have not seen it yet. Um, another film I want to talk about is Terror Fire 2. And I, I can't, this is something I want to say about that. Is that. I'm surprised by how many people who call themselves horror fans who've never heard of Terror Fire. This is like the third film. And I don't remember the guy's name. It's like Damien something. Damien Leone, maybe, I think may be the director's name. But this is the third film. The first one's called All Hallows' Eve. Uh, Terrifier is the second one, and then Terrifier 2. Now, um, I remember seeing an article about Terrifier 2 when it first came out in theaters, and they were saying that people were getting violently ill because it was so gory. And let me just tell you guys, the special effects, there were a couple times I was just like, I gotta look away because it was super gory scenes. Um, for like a slasher kind of a, a gore kind of film, this one really, the special effects were kind of really, really well done. This is another one that I really enjoyed and I gave this one a 4 out of 5 star rating on Letterboxd as well. Um, really, really, it was kind of a lot of mindless, kind of senseless carnage, but like, <clears throat> it kind of had a little bit of a story, and they had this creepy little clown girl, 
<clears throat> and I don't know if she's from the first or second film. I just everything just kind of ties in on this horror uh, terrifier too. But yeah, so those are the films I wanted to talk to you guys about. Uh, let's talk about the books that I started reading. Um, after I finished up uh, stirring the sheets. I decided to go check out The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky. I think that's how you say his name. Um, but yeah, this was on this has been on my TBR for like forever. And to be honest with you guys, I'm not a big young adult reader. I tend to avoid reading young adult. Just because every young adult book I've ever read, I either find them horribly boring. Or I just don't get anything out of them. And I wanted to read this one because I had seen the film. It's been a long time since I've seen the film. But I wanted to read this because it take, it's, it's high school students in the 90s. Okay, I was a high school student in the 90s. Um, I swear to God, I think the start of this is 1991. And I think I was a freshman in 1991 or 1990. Oh, yes, thank you. Yes, I was a freshman in 1990. So, yeah. I, that's the whole motivation for me wanting to read this because it takes place in the 90s. I wanted to see what the hype was with it. Um, to be honest with you, I find it kind of annoying. Um, it's, it's written in letter format. Um, the main character, Charlie, tends to write all these letters for this unnamed person. They call them dear friend. Um, they try not to identify certain people that they're talking about. And they just... What I don't get is, why would you make a book based on letters that were written to somebody? It would, make, it would have made more sense if this was a journal. Be like, oh, this is Charlie's journal you're reading. That would have made more fucking sense than letters written to a random stranger who is unnamed and we don't know who they are. Because um, it's been so long since I've seen the film, I was really confused as to who Charlie was. So, like, I was like, why is this kid crying all the time? And this is, like, the first ten pages. I was, like, I was so annoyed by the main character. And I was just like, I don't know if I really want to read this. And I was kind of... You know, I still don't know how I feel about this. I still don't know if I really want to read this, but I'm going to trudge on through it because it is one of those popular books, so I want to give my input on the book because it is one of those popular books, and that's the only reason why I'm trudging through it. I kind of feel like a little bit like I was like, am I in a reading slump because I'm just not enjoying it? I feel like there's a couple of books, a couple of stuff that I'm reading now I'm just not enjoying. Um, this comic, on the other hand, I am enjoying. This is The Good Asian. This is a new image comic series. It's a crime mystery thriller. And this one takes place in the early 1900s. It's kind of like, a little bit like Charlie Chan, if you're familiar with Charlie Chan. It's an old detective series from the 1940s. It's kind of like that, so it does kind of it does mention a lot of Chinatown kind of stuff, um, a lot of racism against the Chinese, and there's a lot of history that they where they explain certain laws and certain events that went on with Chinese immigration. Like I didn't know that at one time, like there were Chinese illegally coming into the U.S. because they had like this little some kind of little catch where if you were a relative you could come into the country and if you were certain like certain like jobs were of those people were allowed to come into the country and it's like it's kind of weird and it was kind of interesting to learn that little fact i'm almost done with that and um i don't know if the author is chinese too uh, no i think they are asian though their name is porn sack pinche shok which I probably butchered the guy's name, but I I don't know how to pronounce it. But yeah, this is really good. I know that there's a volume two. I I don't I don't I don't think I'm going to review this one, so that's why I wanted to talk about it in this video. Um, I really don't think people are going to be looking searching for this book, but it is a good read if you guys are into crime thrillers, detective stuff. Check it out. Um, I'm like over halfway finished. 
with Good Omens by Gaiman and Pratchett. Um, one of the things I have to say about this book, there are way too many characters. Too many characters, too many subplots. Um, I thought this book was just going to be about um, the Antichrist and the return of Christ like in contemporary times. So I kind of thought that's what it was going to be, but it's got all these little subplots like we were... There's too many characters, too. I hate when when authors will write a story and they'll just keep introducing more and more characters. And there's so many characters, so many people, it's so hard to keep track of all the people and what's going on. Um, I'm not really enjoying this one. There was at one point... Um, before I have gotten as far as I have, because I kind of pushed through a lot of it today, um, I just felt like I wanted to DNF this. And if you're not familiar with DNF, that means dude did not finish. And I was really close to DNFing this because I just wasn't enjoying it. Um, part of it is because of the strong religious kind of, you know, the events are mainly focused on religion. Um, but they, they did introduce another subplot that has to do with witches and witch finders. And I find that to be an interesting thing. Um, two characters whose ancestors were enemies have kind of met up. And I find that to be an interesting subplot story that's kind of keeping me wanting to learn more about them. Um, but yeah, aside from that, I'm finding this one to be a struggle. And I don't know, I like I still can't figure out which parts were written by Pratchett because I've never read anything by Pratchett. Um, I've gotten a little bit farther with On the Savage Side by Tiffany McDaniel. You know, a little bit further with that. That's another one. Like, I can see what Tiffany McDaniel's trying to do with that story. She's trying to humanize these sex worker victims in the Chillicothe case. Um... And she's also trying to, like, you know, humanize people who are heroin addicts and have to resort to sex work to support their addiction. And how some of these people probably have past abuse scenarios and family problems and growing up poor and all that. I get it. I get what she's trying to do with this book. But to be honest with you, it's just not... One of my favorites by her, I read her other two prior books. I know everybody knows her for Betty, and everybody always talks about how great Betty was. I liked Betty, but her, the book that really shone for me that I think was her best was her debut novel called The Summer That Melted Everything. That one, hands down, I feel like is her best work. Um, that's the one I really enjoyed, but yeah... That's all I can really say. Like I said, I'm not feeling 100% motivated, but I felt like I had to film this because I wanted to let you guys know about some of these books or some of these films because I, I'm probably, I, I, I'm on the fence of whether I'm going to review this or not. I know it's a popular one. I may or may not review it. I mean, I got to see how I feel by the end of it. I'm over halfway through it. You know, like, I'm, Probably definitely I'm going to review The Perks of Being a Wallflower just because that's one of those super hype books that everybody says is a must read. And I want to give my two cents on that. But of course, as always, I'm going to have a link to Amazon. Maybe I'll link The Good Asian or Good Omens. I don't know. I'll pick one of those books and anything that's purchased through that link it helps me out. I get a small percentage of every sale. Um, with the way inflation is, it's super crazy. If you're going to buy books anyways, why not do it through my links? I'm also going to throw down my coffee link if you wouldn't mind helping me out by buying me a coffee or two. And if you can't do any of those things, but you're new here, go ahead and hit subscribe and hit that notification bell so you're aware of when I upload again. That's all I got for you guys. Not a super exciting video, I know. I'm like, Ugh. You know, I'm just kind of, I'm so drained. It's just like, my job sucks. <laughs> I have no money or motivation to do anything, so it is what it is. It's the way she goes, like Ray from Trailer Park Boys says. So that's all I got for you guys. Till next time.